Greetings everyone, this is BJ Black from No Export For You, and welcome to part 138 of my Let's Play of Amayui Castle of Mystery. Oh, let me just give it, take a second to review who needs experience here. My last five summons. Alright, I can work with that. Mm, lightning attacks, the other attacks, physical, and physical and fire attacks. Mm -hmm. This may be a little difficult on my ghosts. <laughs> well, that's how it goes. Well, what's the worst that could happen? Uh... Okay, that's physical. And that's lightning. And it isn't... safe against darkness, so I'm gonna around this one with my ghosts. Let's see, what's this area of effect? Oh, it's one of those triangles. Those are a pain. This thing has three movement points, so we can sneak up along this way. Yep. Kodokaisha. Oh, good job, Yorin. Uh, well, I prefer physical attack to magic attack, especially for you, but... Still, a level up is a level up. Hmm. Well, she can take it. Oh. Great, this enemy I decided to box in has been injured. So it's decided to chase down the closest thing it can find. In an attempt to not be easily killed. Like I was going to do. Well, nuts. Okay. Yeah, 
You know, I kind of have the inclination to cherry tap this sucker to death. But if he's going to be squirming, I better, you know, not dick around with him. In short. Nope, the counterattack would kill it without a capture. There it goes again. Oh, anyway. So there's a patch of the wager that goes down, huh? But our objective is the way to that pillar of light. This might continue up to the top of the mountain, so... Hmm. Well, we can't tell from here whether this passage of our found will lead towards the top of the mountain. Although it may, may be in the end valuable to our objective. We don't know now, but if we have time we should explore it. So that opens up another free map, probably a free map, in the God's Haze. Perfect. Physical resistance. Oh, give me a break, you're in. Hmm. Alright. Here's a kill and a capture. Good experience. Leaving only the boss and a bit of exploration. Guess Seiseki. I believe that's what increases your SP. Now this has fire attacks, so I don't want to run in too close. I could kill her from outside her range, though. This should be pretty good. But she needs more experience because that thing's gonna come screaming in now. Oh, healing. Get him. Fix this thing. Good job. Not disappear. It really is convenient when you heal bays. No, oh, that's it. Yeah, see? Hmm. 
Mada, Mada. Oh, great. Physical attack. Which is all we really need. Now. This girl regenerates every turn. For, at the very least, 36 HP and 5 SP. And looks like she got to move and it didn't take any F, any fatigue, so... Well, don't need to worry about that. Now the reason we don't run around and getting too close... This enemy isn't as dangerous as I thought she would be. I mean, for being a fire elemental, I thought she'd tear her apart. Huh. Anyway. You just retreat. And... Hmm. Let's see if I can get this enemy to derp just like I want her to derp. Here! Here's a target! I mean, it's not going to do you any good to attack him, but it's a target. Uh, that's not pretty. But, what are the options? Oh, oh, this is perfect. Come in from outside our range. Hit her for practically nothing, but get 10 experience anyway. <laughs> no. Mmm, but wait. No, she doesn't need the experience. Why do I even have her out anymore? Nope. I'm going to leave I for when I know she has yeah, this kind of thing. Now if I had attacked and she had attacked on her turn, that would be one dead eye. Well, oh, at least we don't need to worry about that now. Magic attack, that's great. Now, remaining Ranrin and you. Oh, jeez. Fine. See if I care. Now, once we get all our characters to level 39, I'm bringing out the big guns. And I'm getting double drops. Well, there's no capturing, so just double drops. Well, whomever. Oh, what I tell ya. Nah, just stand there looking stupid, Yorin. Since Ranrin does way too much damage... Actually... Since Ranrin does way too much damage, we need to let her regenerate. For several turns, possibly. Then Ranrin can attack. And I can bring in somebody to kill her with. Hmm, whom shall I kill her with? Preferably someone resistant to fire. With a ranged attack. Hmm, nobody really fits the bill too well, do they? Oh. Mikshuana will do. 
In any case. Way too much. Oh. Back up for me, Shuana. Anyway, not this turn. That'll do. Okay. All we need to do is keep up with you until he gets his level up. And then once she has enough life, we'll attack with Ranin as well. We're talking a minimum of 157. But preferably more since Ranin has a bunch of luck so she gets critical hits. Whatever. Oh, it doesn't end the battle if she does kill her. No, running, bad running. Bad bitch, no money. No, I ought to probably show this boss since it's a new enemy. But anyway, not this turn. Now it's just running. Perfect. With some physical attack. Ah, she needs that for when we're actually doing captures. Alright. Kisnir. Instead of a capture rope, you get a mercy armlet. And... Definitely not your fire sword. Hmm, well. We've got a couple turns. Haha, <laughs> sucker. Oh, jeez. Well, it's a bit of damage anyway. Now she should have 40-some hit points. So Kisnir can knock her down. And Mikshuana will... Why am I still trying to use the... Hmm, anyway. Honestly, I could have had Kisner do this. Oh. Let's see what she looks like. Hmm. Even fancier than the other ones. Well. How was that? Let's try it again. Yeah, make sure Anna still has that fool meal on. Do you see this? This is me flipping you off, lady. In spite of the fact that you're hot and all. Oh, wait. Now she has too much life. Okay, I think I can pull this off. No, uh, 12 damage, no. Here, this will work. Hmm. 
Yes. Ah, poor lady. Ah, oh, poor lady. Ah, 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 poor it's something else. She gave us... Magic attack! That's valuable. Not that I use those things all that often. Or, like, ever. What remains? One more mining point. And a bit more control of the map. Ooh, 99% control. That means there's a hidden room. Oh. Well, more surprises. Darkness shards. Okay, you will be able to find the mining point wherever it is. This is a little more complex than the last event. So, in this shutaway place, there seems to be a treasure box. Maybe there's something valuable waiting for us here. Ooh. So we open it up and some blinding light jumps out at us. Blocking his eyes with his arm, he waits for the light to subside. What's this? Some kind of spirit's light? So... From some ancient age, there was a spirit's, well, corpse. And inside the treasure box, it was protecting something. Which means, what's inside the treasure box is still intact. Wonder what it is. So there's an old sheepskin paper carved with the uh, old magic language in it that's uh, the old elf language as they well the two terms are interchangeable well if it's translation work it's not something he can do just in the middle of an exploration it takes some time to do translations so once we return, we should look into it more. So, interesting. What's inscribed in this skin is not just letters and things. There's an illustration. Now, I've always seen an illustration like this before. It's from the old Fiusia Holy Wars. But there is a portion that's different. In it, a suffering god, or the suffering god, is being delivered these bright lights by people. So people are delivering light to a god. Hmm, I wonder what that means. I don't think I can figure out this symbolism. Anyway, perhaps this is something about the God's Haze as it existed at that time. So, more than of all expected, this seems pretty important. So, if we can do a translation, we may be able to find a hint as to how do we can save Fia. So, once we return to the castle, let's look into it properly. Hmm. Let me look at that. Oops. It's 
got to be in here. Oh, this is it. Tear bindings, secret missive. So, some elven ancestors left this behind. Well, what's it doing in with the in this place that's supposed to be the dark refiner's home base? Oh, oh there it is. Okay, I'm good to go. We've arrived. So let's investigate. You know, one of these trial runs I did, I got someone killed and I revived her with a phoenix down. I have a ton of those things. So we're done exploring the area and we've gotten to the place we've had our sights on this whole time. Ah, finally we've gotten to that shining waterfall that's been bothering us. So, in the end, we don't know what this is and what its source is, but we can finally investigate. So this waterfall, taking one look at it, well, from the first time we looked at it, it's always been bothering us, so... Huh? So we get in close, and something definitely gets a, gets to seeming out of place. Hey, this is... Don't tell me. This is no waterfall. Yeah, far from being a waterfall, that isn't even water. It's... Well, hardened light, basically. So, it's base. It must be something similar to that pillar of light we saw from the outside. So, what's going on? Is this not different? Or... Isn't this about the same as the Pillar of Light? Yeah, that's what it looks like. In which case... Well... But, the, unlike the one we saw from the outside, this one is descending. So, if there are two pillars... Well... No, it's hard to think that there would be two pillars, in which case... So, the one that's ascending from the top of the mountain, and this one that's descending through the mountain, could be the same one. In which case, somewhere above us is the Pillar of Light's center, where it's stretching out both upwards and downwards. Ha! Huh. Yeah, it's natural to think that. Now that we're looking at it up close, we get to understand what it is a bit. It's just that what you basically see is a pillar, but it's also kind of spreading out throughout the facility. So where there shouldn't be any light sources inside of this mountain, this light also lights things in places. 
Well, certainly here it does. Nafia, for one, is putting on a serious expression and just staring at the pillar of light. Oh, look, here are all of our... the first five characters. Avarofia, Kisner, and our two Reine. Oh, anyway. Oh. Oh, okay, Fia. Is something bothering you here? So this light, having a look at it up close like this, she understands. It's an amazing source of power, she says. But it doesn't have a fixed form. It's just dispersing out into what's around it. It's a mysterious phenomenon. So this light is basically power, is it? It's just that it's made into, uh, well, made visible here. So as Fia continues looking at it, she seems to be, you know, thinking something. Something bothering her kind of thing. And somehow in front of this light that seems to be drawing her in, she loses her expression. Okay, Fia. Can you imagine what might cause this, well, this hardening, this, um, this manifestation of power? Yeah, it seems somehow she's kind of remembering it, but she doesn't know. Nothing's coming out from her head. Yeah, story of this game. Ah, uh, her head hurts. So, she makes one of those thinking hard expressions and puts her hand to her forehead. Looks like another headache. Oh, Fia, what's wrong? Did something happen? How far are you an idiot? No, she's alright. There was just something that shot through her there. But it doesn't hurt anymore now. Well, that's good. If that's so, that's good. So, the pattern is, since long ago, since uh, we've had her around, when she tries to remember stuff about her past, she gets these headaches. So this must also be connected to her past somehow. Perhaps this means that the pillar of light is connected to the loss of her memories? This seems to get more important the more we think about it, the more we learn about it. Alright, if we go up from here, we may be able to learn something about, you know, this thing. And then, we may learn something about the castle to be able to take this, uh, how they were able to make these things and such.
So if we investigate this pillar of light, we may find a way, a method to release Fia from the magic stones. I wonder why that's come up. It does say release her from the magic stones, but she is not in them anymore since like the beginning of the game. Maybe I missed something. Now, so we get another map to go to now that we've gotten this far. Oh. All right, so the first one we found, it's a side map and it's free. The next one is, well, clearly a story map. Ha <laughs> ha! There's something so called a soul gosh here. One of the commenters on, well, it was QCraft, I'll tell you that much. He was talking about a soul, a soul gash that was in Kamidori. Ah, anyway. Nothing new there. We... There aren't a lot of demons in this game, are there? Alright, three star. Oh, perfect. Mm hmm. <laughs> Four star females. Now, multi hit or spirit killer. Multi hit. Alright, at the very least, let's put that skill on you. Oh. You know, the way that he has these three skills always on. They're very valuable and all, but it prevents me from putting on other skills that would also be useful. This is exploration, finding hidden rooms, mining, and opening chests and doors. Those are basically the skills that you use most often for a good explorer. Yeah, anyway. That'll be that for this time. Next time... Yeah, the free map, and after that, the story map. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.